Okay, guys, welcome back to another episode of Rotten Reviews. Today I'm going to take a look at Rotten Reviews of The Mummy from 2017 with Tom Cruise. It has a tomato meter score of 16% and an audience score of 35%. It's considered rotten. It's considered rotten by not only Rotten Tomatoes, but it's considered bad by just about everybody out there, professional and uh, armchair critic alike. I won't disagree. Um, I don't actually think it was an unentertaining movie. I think that people were expecting, of course, a horror movie. They were expecting um, maybe not straight up horror, but they were expecting more along the lines of The Mummy, uh, the previous film with Brendan Fraser, perhaps, where it had horror elements but mixed action and comedy. But that's not what they got. Um, they almost got a sort of uh, superhero origin story for um, a Universal Pictures Dark Universe uh, film project that they've never been able to get off the ground. And so this movie ends up, especially in its last act, feeling very much like Suicide Squad. Um, even the female money, mummy is reminiscent of the villain in Suicide Squad to me, the Enchantress, so to speak. Um, so I think it's very off-putting to people and they consider it rotten. Now the other thing is that Tom Cruise, um, he comes across as just being too old for his role in this. He's trying to play some kind of Mission Impossible type uh, action hero that isn't really a good guy but he's got the physical characteristics of a good guy. The only problem is they show Tom Cruise in ways that they can show off de-aging technology and CGI designed to make his 50-something year old body look like he's 25 or 30 something um, and it's off-putting too in its own way they really should have shot this movie in a way to hide uh, the flaws with Tom Cruise's physique and age um, they should have shot it differently so they didn't have to rely on de-aging um, you know, and make it off-putting like that. Another flaw in the movie is that it doesn't seem to know what it wants to be. Um, the title alone tries to tease the audience that it's a horror movie, maybe action, but there are a lot of different writers involved with this, and you get kind of um, an attempt at an action movie, an attempt at an action comedy, an attempt at an action horror, an attempt at some kind of romance, and also an attempt at, um, you know, a Marvel-esque type of origin story. It doesn't know what it wants to be, and so at the end of it, you're not sure what you just saw. Um, the very ending scene in itself is reminiscent of, um, almost it gives me the feeling of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in the way it's done. In fact, the main villain, or the villain that turns out to be not a villain at the end, um, who introduces you to this uh, band of heroes, so to speak. He is played by Russell Crowe, and he definitely reminds me of the Dr. and Jekyll Hyde character from um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And, um, you know, it's just very strange. You know, I get vibes from different things, and I'm left with the impression that. Um, Universal Studios is never going to have a success in trying to create a movie franchise because I guess this is what the third attempt, the third attempt that they failed in starting a franchise. So let's get into the rotten reviews, uh, see what else other people have to think. Um, we're in October of 2019, half a star, an absolute horrible movie period. The acting is horrible, the story is horrible, the CG is horrible. At one point, at one point, it is Dr. Jekyll slash Mr. Hyde versus the Mummy. I think maybe they were trying to start a new League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I am not sure who wrote this piece of crap, but they should not get another job in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, they're saying what I said. They're giving it half a star. I would give it two stars because it was mildly entertaining as an action film. Um, not having high expectations. So I don't, I don't give it as poor of a thing as half a star. I say rotten, yes, but two stars also. Four stars, much better than what people say, and I wish they continued the Dark Universe. Well, I wished that, uh, you know, there would be a Dark Universe franchise that can hold up on its own, that each movie on its own holds up, and it's not just an attempt, and we don't see it as an attempt at a franchise, but we haven't gotten that. 
two stars. It's no The Mummy 1999, inferior to that picture in every way. I expected a lot more blatant attempts at shared universe building, but this does feel largely like a standalone film, so I think those criticisms are totally founded. However, criticisms that it just isn't very good are accurate. So they're complaining that it's... Um, you know, an attempt to build a franchise, and yet they're complaining that it's not. I'm not sure what they're trying to say. Half a star. Good thing that Brendan Fraser didn't play in this crap. Yeah. Five stars. This movie is fun and entertaining to hell with the critics and haters. <laughs> One star, I am grateful I didn't see this film. Three stars, it does have cool visuals and an okay story, but what makes this movie the worst is its ending. Yeah, it's trying to start a franchise, and it doesn't do it very well. Also, you know, you can say that it has too much exposition. There are a lot of scenes, a lot of wasted footage, in my opinion, that's giving you exposition, um, and it's repeating a lot of the same stuff over and over. Um, it shows you kind of the origin of the mummy character, the female mummy. Uh, it shows you the same stuff like in different ways too many times. It doesn't seem to move the plot forward or teach you something new with these flashbacks. That's another legitimate gripe I have. <clears throat> um, a lot of the runtime was wasted in that fashion. Also, on the subject of the female mummy, uh, on one hand they seem to want to make her kind of sexy, and at the end, they kind of redeem her as being possibly like a member of their team of superheroes. When at the beginning of The uh, Mummy, she is um, definitely the villain, is irredeemable, is evil. So that's off-putting. Now, they make her sexy, but at the same time, they don't really um, take that anywhere. Like, they don't go all the way with that. They kind of tease that they want to make her sexy, but then they don't do anything with that, and it's kind of falls disappointing in that regard, too. Like, it's like the writers couldn't figure out what they were doing. They were arguing over if she's going to become sexy at the end or what she's going to become. Um, it was very weird like that. One star. Shame on you, Russell, mumbles Crow, and Tom Cruise, it may be time to retire. Complete waste of time. Shoot me now, for I cannot unsee this turkey. Wait, shoot the writers first and force the, the director to eat their ashes along with all that English sand. Understandable. Five stars. I want it sequel. This was an amazing movie. No. Um, I will uh, agree that um, the scene in which Tom Cruise basically plays his Mission Impossible self and he's inside the doomed um, cargo transport plane. That was pretty cool, but again, that's like a scene from Mission Impossible. It doesn't really belong in The Mummy. So... Uh, it worked, but then overall, story-wise, it didn't fit. Uh, one star. This movie could only be good in case there's absolutely nothing else to watch. And even so, it's probably better if you sleep or do something else. It's extremely, extremely linear, has no interesting story, and it pretty much reflects what Tom Cruise thinks about himself. Spoiler alert, he is half monster and half god. <clears throat> Yeah, at the end, he becomes like a superhero, like some kind of reclusive superhero um, that's been given powers by the mummy. It's kind of weird. Again, it kind of gives me a, a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen type of feel, but it doesn't pull it off very well. Uh, four and a half stars. I don't know why this movie got so much flack. I thought it was great. Tom Cruise is one of the best actors out there, and the rest of the cast were so, no slouches either. Good story, satisfying ending, even funny. Thanks for the quality watch. No, you're not. Uh, you're not being harsh enough. You know, if we can pick apart the other characters, uh, Tom Cruise's uh, female counterpart in this story, you can't really say she's a love interest because she's kind of is and kind of isn't. And you can't say she's a straight-up damsel in distress because she kind of is and kind of isn't. She doesn't really do anything for the plot. Um, you know, again, it seems like the writers couldn't figure out what to do with her. They couldn't figure out if she was a romantic interest or whether she was an action hero alongside Tom Cruise. It's very strange. It's a waste. Um, one and a half stars. Movie doesn't any sense. 
From unrealism to weird comedy, such as the friend being a friendly zombie after only moments of trying to kill them before, it has good visuals and choreography, but its con continuity errors cost the movie dearly. Yeah, it does try to do what American uh, Werewolf in London, the 1980s movie, tried to do, where um, his kind of comedy-type sidekick um, becomes like an undead type of character that appears to him. It doesn't work, but you see what they were trying to do. Um, again, it's like more than one writer couldn't figure out what to do. One of them wanted to do, you know, rip off the character from um, American Werewolf in London, and other writers disagreed and wanted to go in another direction. Anyway, uh, one star. Unfortunately, they put Cruz in this movie. Also lost in this offshoot is the moments of invigorating fun woven with brilliant characters mixing it up with ancient mysteries and monsters. The supporting cast did a good job, but they were dragged down by Cruz's inability to act. If you like two-dimensional, been there, done that tropes, this is the show for you. Well, you know, if you judge just Tom Cruise's performance alone, if you didn't know that he was already a big action star, if you hadn't seen him in better stuff, you would have said it was passable, it didn't rub you the wrong way. But knowing who Tom Cruise is and watching his other good films where he does a great job at playing a character, uh, yeah, it's really bad, and you know it's bad, and it's like he didn't care, or I don't know, his heart wasn't in it. Two stars. It is okay for passing time, but The Mummy from 1999 is a lot better, so watch that instead. One and a half stars. Breaks the expectation of the reboot. This film cracks too much on sarcophagus of the dark universe that many people were anticipating. So yeah, I guess a lot of people were anticipating this as some kind of start to a dark universe franchise. And you'll notice that at the beginning of the film, it kind of does a weird mashup medley intro for their dark universe featuring footage clips from a lot of their old black and white monster movies, vampires, Bride of uh, Frankenstein, etc. Even a little short clip from Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, they don't do it very well. It's like they kind of just threw this all together, this dark universe idea, um, in an attempt to catch up with Marvel and DCEU. And um, they never did catch up. I hope they've given up because... Um, it's not looking too good. They're way late to this. One and a half stars. Tom Cruise is always watchable. To achieve a better score, the CGI would have needed to be much better and the chemistry given longer to develop. Again, there is no real chemistry between him and the romantic or, or the female lead. I don't even know she's supposed to be a romantic interest. That's the problem. Continuing, it didn't make sense to me either that the mummy's coffin was so easily raised. They built a prison meant to last for eternity, but they had counterweights that would raise the coffin and release the mummy if a single cord broke. Why have counterweights at all? Seemed too unbelievable to me. Also, why did the rat alley scene happen? Yeah, they're referring to a scene in which uh, Tom Cruise goes to, you know, Indiana Jones, Jones style. He finds an ancient tomb in Iraq, of all places. And, you know, the Egyptians apparently have gone to Iraq in ancient times to imprison this uh, horrific, evil female mummy in a tomb. But yet they've also put in the mechanics, in uh, elaborate mechanics, no less, to have her be raised out of her imprisonment um, with the slightest tug on a rope, so to speak. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Logic-wise, it fails. One and a half stars. The mummy is a childish effort. Don't you realize that we have computers now that can make good CGI? One star, a little like the original mummy movies, except without the well-written story and decent acting. Five stars, I didn't have high hopes at the start of this movie, but I feel it redeemed the franchise after two and three. Still had what I loved about the first one and didn't force the comedy too much. Well, this reviewer's way out to lunch. They're living on another planet, on their planet, this is like some kind of sequel or continuation to the Brendan Fraser movies. Um, well, not on this earth, not this earth that I know. So let's move on. Half a star. If you think this is going to be as good as Mission Impossible, think again. Avoid. Did Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe read the script before signing up to this movie? It almost seems like they didn't. 
you know, I don't know, but it seems like they didn't know what they were doing or what they were, it, I don't know. My thought is that somehow um, they thought the final cut of the movie would come out differently and it was edited totally different from what they were expecting. Maybe there's, who knows, another hundred hours of footage that got left on the proverbial cutting room floor in the editing room. That's all I can figure. Three stars. There's an attempt here to do something new with the mummy myth, but Tom Cruise isn't able to liven up the result with his heroics, his wisecracks, or by taking his shirt off yet again. Yeah, and that's a complete fail. He takes his shirt off in one scene. The point of it, I guess, is just to show you how great a shape he is in as a 50-something action hero. But it fails because you can tell it's CGI that they've done de-aging or CGI to his midsection to make him look like that. <clears throat> Complete fail. It's like they shot themselves in the foot by doing that. The tone is all over the place and Crow feels shoehorned in as Mr. Jekyll. Though there's admittingly a fun scene set in zero gravity and another one involving swimming zombies, but the film mainly borrows ideas from other better films, and this feels like a vanity project and an overconfident attempt at jump-starting a new franchise. Yes, um, if you told me that this was Tom Cruise being full of himself and thinking he could start a franchise on his own and he took this whole thing over... I could believe that, but I'm not sure the credits reflect that. If that's what happened, it's not, you know, the credits, when you look at the writing credits, they, you know, it would be a conspiracy to cover that up, but it comes across like that. Uh, two stars, Tom Cruise gets to run, so that's probably why he is even in the movie. Otherwise, he's totally miscast. Leave the mummies to Brendan Fraser. Two and a half stars, how many times does she say, Nick, Nick, Nick? Two and a half stars. Sure, Tom Cruise brings the fun action stunts, but the story is so uneven and predictable that this CGI-heavy reboot is a poor start to Universal Studios' dark universe. And even though Cruise has played many roles through his career, I can't help but only see him as Ethan Hunt from now on. Yeah, it's like he's playing his character from Mission Impossible, but you don't have all the other stuff that would make it work in Mission Impossible. One star. The Dark Universe concept completely died with this huge first installment misfire. Its cast is well intended, but they alone couldn't save it, focusing only on the future without giving us any interesting anything interesting to start with. We also have a terrible script, lifeless characters, horrible storytelling, and a completely incomprehensible climax. It's no wonder why Brendan Fraser hated this remake, a truly terrible movie. Yeah, I largely agree. Two and a half stars, surprisingly boring. Yeah, I'll say it's boring um, not because there's no action, but because it's predictable and bland. Um, you get a CGI, you get, well, a mummy that's becoming a, a kind of a sexy woman, and you can see where that's going. But beyond that, there's nothing unpredictable. It doesn't take it anywhere else interesting. Uh, two and a half stars, just wasn't good. Nowhere near as good as the Brendan Fraser films were. Nowhere near as fun, captivating. It was just boring and predictable. I don't want a sequel, or if they do one, it needs to redeem this one first. Five stars. Loved this movie. People keep comparing to the 90s Mummy movies, and they are not supposed to be a remake or a sequel. It was amazing for what it was supposed to be, and I am ashamed of people comparing it to the movies that this movie has nothing to do with. Uh, that doesn't excuse this movie. I'm certainly not comparing it to the 90s movies. I don't even consider these to be in the same genre. Um, they don't feel like they are. It seems like this was not intended to have anything to do with the Brendan Fraser movies, and yet I think this movie still is rotten. One star, an absolute travesty, falls flat on any chance to pay respects to the original Mummy. Uh, if you mean the original Mummy in Universal Studios um, filmography, um, yeah, Boris Karloff's Mummy was an actual horror movie. Um, I'm sure it doesn't like scare people today, but it did back in the day when it was made. This is not a straight-up scary horror movie by any stretch. Three and a half stars. <clears throat> a good beginning for the Monster series, but not quite ready for prime time. So sad Universal canceled the series. Well, what choice did they have? If this was their big showstopper, it bombed. One star. Boring. Found it tedious to sit through. Four stars. 
one of the best of all Mummy series yet, extremely well written with many fun surprises and special effects, including another strong performance by Tom Cruise. Well, he ran a lot, yeah. A noteworthy performance as his female sidekick, Annabella Wallace, with an interesting twist where this time the mummy is over or is formed as a woman, performed as a woman, both terrifyingly and splendidly performed by Sophia Butella. No, it's not terrifying at all. I'm sorry, but she's just too uh, comic book villain, kind of semi-sexy. Uh, it's not scary at all. The movie goes back into the past where it all began, much like the original movie with Bela Lugosi. No, it doesn't. Um, in fact, it doesn't even make logical sense. Um, it's completely comic book logic. You're saying that the ancient Egyptians had this terrible female uh, villain. They needed to mummify her and dispose of her for all of time. So they took her to Iraq, of all places. Never mind that that's quite a journey back in the day from the ancient Egyptians. Uh, consider it yourself on a map. So anyway, you go to Iraq, you set up an elaborate tomb that has a mechanism to even retrieve her from her imprisonment that anybody can go ahead and just uh, cut a cord and activate. It makes no it makes no sense except in the comic book world, but at least in a comic book episode, they would have attempted to explain a little bit of that, um, probably most of that. You have to give comic book, book stories a little bit more credit. This wasn't a comic book story. It failed because this was just five or six writers slamming things together, none of which make logical sense together. Half a star. At one point, I started to appreciate and even miss the Brendan Fraser version, and not just the first one, the three of them. What a nonsensical piece of crap. And it looks like they deluded themselves into thinking that a sequel was possible. Well, in their defense, there's a sequel to Unbreakable, so anything is possible. Yeah, we can get into M. Night Shyamalan, but that's another, that's another episode. Two and a half stars. Thoroughly derivative and superfluous attempt to establish another franchise based on the universal horror classic and somehow mistaking zombies for mummies. Besides some splashy action and effects, there's nothing much to be thrilled about. Yeah, but I wouldn't even give it two and a half stars. Um, one and a half, two stars max. One star, just bad. What was DC thinking? Uh, it wasn't DC, but you're forgiven for thinking that because the villain, the mummy, she does kind of remind me of Enchantress from Suicide Squad. So there's that. Five stars. How is this at 15%? It's the beginning of a possible MCU, but for horror action movies, I can't believe this, and I can't believe I haven't seen this earlier. I demand a continuation of the Dark Universe, and I hope others agree. Um, I think that like you work for Universal Studios, but you're way too late for the marketing, even on the video release. Um, who knows, maybe this is being re-released as a box set, and this is part of the marketing, because I don't believe that's a genuine review. Four stars. It was exactly what I thought it would be, based on Egyptian magic with some cool twists. Okay. Three stars. I thought it was an okay film. I think the total panning it got was uncalled for. A pleasant, if unspectacular, way to spend a couple hours. Mm, I kind of agree, but if you go to two stars. One star. I don't get it. Well, I thought this was supposed to be a reboot with a great plot, but clearly wasn't. And as soon as Tom Cruise came on screen, it felt like saying, what does he have to do with any of the original franchise films? Could they have not at least said he was Alex O'Donnell's grandson, military man, relic hunter? Also, I know they want to make a universal dark universe, but at least make them all first before you try to make a half a million film just to kick it off. Well, you know, they are saying one interesting thing. Um, you know, when Iron Man was made, it wasn't an attempt to make a franchise. And, you know, every other franchise, they're attempting the franchise first before they worry about having standalone films. This is a classic example of that. Uh, Universal Studios wanted a franchise, and they just wanted the franchise. That's the goal. They didn't care about the individual movies. It wasn't like they made one spectacular movie, and then they knew they could branch off from there. No, they just, the franchise was the goal. And when the franchise is the goal, you're not going to reach your goal. That's not how this works. That's not how fandom works. 
Um, it's pretty easy to figure out for me, but then again, maybe studio executives are clueless. Maybe they don't go online. Some of them don't, and they say they only go online sometimes, but they're too afraid to see critics uh, bag on their work. I don't know. It just seems like they're out of touch. Franchises succeed because the fandom already wanted to go there. Uh, they don't succeed because you create a franchise and then just drag everybody there by putting out cookie-cutter products. Doesn't work like that. Three stars, it was pretty good. It was definitely worth a watch. Uh, no, two stars. Three stars. The beginning is actually quite promising. Cruise works great in what feels like an uncharted adventure, and the following plane crash is almost on a Mission Impossible level of intensity. Unfortunately, as the dark universe opens up, the tone of the film oddly jumps from horror scenes to humor and back in rather gloomy and underwhelming settings. That continues all the way through the mediocre showdown, and it turns out that sometimes a face can be too familiar for a certain kind of film. I agree 100%. I've seen many people online compare this film to the Uncharted series of video games. I can't speak to that because I don't play those games. I haven't played them, but so many people have said that. I'll take it at face value. Um, they're also saying that, you know, Tom Cruise is too typecast as a Mission Impossible type character. I also agree, and that kind of ruins this film. Uh, three and a half stars. I've viewed them movie two time over the last week and honestly can't understand all the negative reviews. It's an action movie for Pete's sake with some great special effects and an interesting storyline. Perhaps if the movie came out with a different title, example, The Damned or The Cursed, most reviewers would have stopped trying to compare it to the other mo mummy movies. No. Uh, that was the intention. They wanted to piggyback off of all the other mummy material but they wanted to have it their way too. It was a fail. Three and a half stars. It was all right. I could probably watch it again. Not sure why people would put hate on the movie. It was interesting and different for a mummy movie. So just watch it and ignore everyone's crappy, pretentious reviews. No, these are audience reviews. They're not pretentious. Uh, people are just bagging on it because it's fun to bag on something Tom Cruise does where he's so full of himself. Uh, promoting something that he's so confident in his ego that it will perform like Mission Impossible and it doesn't. Um, I'll give it to him. His ego tells him to keep on pumping out Mission Impossible movies and so far that has served him well and I enjoy those movies but this doesn't mean that same ego can pump out you know uh, origin stories for new comic franchises no, he should give it up. Uh, four and a half stars. I disregard reviews now. Often have we watched a good movie that has been slated and rated low. This was very watchable, fun, and entertaining. I used to not watch three star or less movies, but some of the most exciting movies watched this year have been two star ones. Yet some five star ones have been rubbish. A few have been specially about racial violence or sexuality issues, and this bumps up the rating. While I believe that informing people about difficulties people have suffered is good, I feel the stories okay we have two things going on in this review they're saying that they don't trust the reviews because they're finding two star reviewed movies that they enjoy yes I agree with this um, but I'm not talking about critic reviews here I'm talking about regular people bagging on this movie so yes we can both agree the critics reviews can be ignored um, Yes, the five-star ones are rubbish, and then this is a perfect example of why. Um, you have a person giving it four and a half stars pretty much just to counteract what he considers as unfair reviews that have come before. That's why we have four and five stars on movies like this, and he's making my point for me. He's, he's making a point against the point he's making. Um, he's being unfair. I'm just judging the movie on itself not on whether people are, were unfair to it before I came along. Um, now he's going into social justice at the end of this, I believe. He's saying, you know, that uh, movies that score social, social justice or woke points are getting higher critic reviews. Yeah, they are. But um, again, we're just here to judge movies based on their own standalone merits. So moving on. Half a star.
decent CGI, dis decent actors, awful execution. Nothing of note happens. It's a 110 minute long reminder that I should have just watched the 1999 version and pretended that this farce was never conceived. Yes, that's an accurate feeling if you were expecting a mummy movie like the ones you got before, then yeah. Five stars. Sophia Butella makes the role hers and steals the show. Her portrayal of Aminet is one of power, loss, and strength. Sophia Butella saved this movie. My only regret is that she didn't get more screen time. Yes, this is a fanboy. He's probably got posters of her. If there are posters of her out there, he's got them. Okay, point taken. Four stars. This isn't a phenomenal remake, but it's action-packed enough to be entertaining. No, it's not a remake. It's not trying to be a remake, um, and it's not action-packed enough to have four stars. This is two stars. Two stars, lacking in any gen genuine charm or campiness from mummy flicks of antiquity. This outing of the mummy feels more like a homework assignment rather than a delightful and fully fleshed out foundation film. Taking itself too seriously during its runtime, it seems to poke and prod at your attention, driving home as much delineation as it can into an almost two hour long film. Rather than setting up a mysterious backstory, guiding your thought down a tunnel of real emotional development, yeah, it, it doesn't hook you. Like, it kind of teases you with the concept that the mummy is female, this sexy thing, and then um, it never hooks you to anything else. Um, it's just mediocre action. So I agree. One star. There really was no point for this. Yeah, there was no point because the movie failed to do, it failed to perform its mission, it failed to start a franchise, so it's a failure um, by uh, intent, the intent of the studios. Uh, perspective. This is a failure. Financially, I'm not sure if it was a failure. Critically, it's a failure. Um, I would say this comes across to me more as something that could have been a Suicide Squad movie, not because of like, you know, the horrible character campiness or whatnot, but because the female villain is very reminiscent of a Suicide Squad or a DC villain. Um, it comes across as an attempt to start a comic franchise. Um, the problem is um, doesn't give you anything new to go on. As a standalone movie, standalone movie, it doesn't give you anything other than the promise of a sexy mummy, and then it yet uh, fails to deliver the actual sexy mummy worth anything by the end. So, complete fail. I think the tomato meter is accurate. I think the audience score, score um, is probably accurate, but I, I could see it dropping down to 25%, and I, I would still consider it fair. And I will uh, move along, and I will see everybody on the next Rotten Reviews.